alive here we are good okay uh, that's two links i've missed today i'm sorry about that for my deeply unprofessional behavior uh, i was talking to herbert about something else it's a butterfly just near where i want to show you are you looking at a butterfly now craig yeah. what butterfly a monarch, a monarch. Good. Con uh, Craig has got a monarch butterfly. There are a whole lot of butterflies around the waterhole here, and the reason we've come to this little waterhole is that we tracked what is either the biggest, the world's biggest water monitor down here, or a small crocodile, <laughs> or a small cro <laughs> crocodile. And I was supposed to be standing there on the log, uh, sort of majestically, as opposed to falling off it like a fool. And massive massive tail drag and big feet and it came to this water it might be underneath the log it might be in the water there somewhere most probably a very large water monitor but it could have been a small crocodile we do know that vladimir the impaler was found in fact on craig's last day of his last work cycle uh, some way from any water underneath a bush and he remained there for a whole day then there's another beautiful butterfly over here and this is what arrested my attention and made me want to stop here it's on the end of this oh, okay craig can you see it fly there it's now just come out into the sun can you see it there it's a sulfur oh it's, no i thought it was a sulfur orange tip it isn't though it isn't. The sulfur orange tip is that yellow color with orange tips to the wings, but that's yellow and it's got orange shoulders. So I'm afraid I don't know what that is. And feeding on the plant that keeps on giving, the Waltheria indica. That is really quite beautiful. I don't know what it is. We'll call it an ori a sulfur orange shoulder, shall we? self orange shoulder and then all around this little field of waltherias we've got these bright orange acreas and they're a new species to me i don't know which one they are they might be the christmas acrea but you can see them can you see them all there craig those bright orange ones there can you see them not really on the screen yes of course craig of course is looking through a screen that has been destroyed by many, many hours out here in the wilderness. And so it's very difficult for him. Craig, shall I go around there and point one out to you? Will that be easier? You stay there. I'll come around here. And, well, a little bit like Brent, our plan is to see if we can't figure out where Shongile went. Craig, if you come down here, you'll find you've got some. There they are, and if somebody could tell me which acria they are, that would be most helpful. Thank you. Just a beautiful field of butterflies here. Makes one feel like one is in a, some sort of uh, children's story. Now, Lightning guy, you're wondering if the monarch butterflies of this area migrate in the same way that yours do up in America, and they don't. I think they do some very uh, minor altitudinal migration, in other words, so they might go higher up for the summer months and then come lower down here for the winter months, but no, they don't do a huge amount of migration. And you'll find that um, generally insect migrations are probably a lot smaller in the tropics than they would be in the more temperate zones. But that American migration of butterflies is just absolutely astounding. And what I find so amazing about it, of course, and I always get this slightly wrong, but I'll have a go at it anyway, is that the butterflies that leave, um, so where is it, it must be southeastern Canada, to fly down to Mexico, don't ever make it there they breed on the way and so no butterfly makes the complete round trip and somehow the trip is encoded into their genetic makeup and it just astounds me that they're able to complete that massive massive trip of some what is it two and a half thousand miles i think and none of them actually complete the full trip 
It's just beautiful. All of these butterflies now warming up. The sun's just sort of started to, it hasn't just come up obviously, but it's just started to break through the clouds and it's starting to heat up the hemolyph in their bodies. That in turn is allowing them to flap their wings and then they'll fly off and they'll stick their little proboscises into the little flowers of the flower that keeps on giving, the Waltheria indica. And eventually, hopefully, they'll find themselves a mate and they'll lay their eggs on the very same plant. And I suspect some of them will have to overwinter in the ground even. It's quite interesting that I wonder, I don't actually know what happens because I've seen many of their eggs on these plants. But these plants are not, well, they're not perennial, are they? Yeah, they are perennial. But they will, I mean, their leaves will fall off during the course of the winter time. So I don't know how the eggs survive the winter. Ah, now Judy H, you reckon that this could be the dancing acria. I have no way of telling if you're right or wrong, and given that you're normally right, I'm going to say yes, okay, dancing acria we'll go with. Thank you very much for that. Good. Alrighty, let's.